Um, we're about to take a quick look at Marvel Champions and um, yeah, so here we go. New LCG from Fantasy Flight Games. Hello. So today we're going to take a quick look at Marvel Champions as I said. Uh, we're going to use the standard introductory scenario which is Rhino. And I'm going to be taking She-Hulk through this mission. Um, so the setup is pretty straightforward. It's partly because we literally just have a core set for now. It's, there are no expansions yet. Um, but because of what's in the core set, it, it, it's designed in a, in a sort of very modular way. So it's quite quick and easy to get the game up to speed. So... For a start, we're going to play Rhino. So here we have Rhino's main scheme, and on side 1A has the instructions for setting that up. So contents, Rhino 1 and 2, or 2 and 3 if you want expert mode. We're not wanting expert mode, so we'll take number 3 out of the way. We'll play Rhino 1 and 2. So this is Rhino who we are up against, and as soon as we defeat his first phase, we have to move on to his second phase. If we defeat his second phase, then we've won the game. Rhino has a main scheme. Uh, so, as we've just said, we're putting Rhino 1 and 2 in play. Then we also put in the set of Rhino cards, a set of standard cards, and a recommend, the recommended encounter set to add on is the Bomb Scare set. So it's literally a case where you just take those three decks, mash them all together. But before we go any further... Um, I'm playing She-Hulk. Um, I'm using the... This isn't quite the game, the card you get in the game, it's just an alternate version of the card that was given out at launch events. I was supposed to play that. Um, I had to pay to go to the launch events, don't worry, I'm not getting previews. Um, so yeah, so here we have She-Hulk. She-Hulk's deck of cards. Uh, you would basically take She-Hulk in a similar way that we built the villain deck. She-Hulk has her own deck of cards. There are a set of standard cards which you can choose which ones you put into your deck following certain rules. And then you choose an aspect. So there are four aspects in the game. Leadership, aggression, uh, justice and protection. I can't remember that. I had to have a look. Uh, I'm playing She-Hulk with the justice cards. Uh, the only rules are you have to have all of She-Hulk's cards and then the rest you can take as much or as little as you like. Um, following the rules of not having more than three of any one card unless there's uh, says something otherwise on the card um, and you can have a deck size of between 40 and 50 cards uh, I hate deck building uh, so I've just taken a deck off um, one of the deck building websites marvelcdb.com this is a She-Hulk Justice deck uh, also as part of She-Hulk's cards there are some enemy cards four of which are your nemesis to do with your nemesis so at some point during the game your nemesis might crop up um, and then you also have what's called each hero has an obligation so there'll be something that crops up at some point during the game that means the hero is going to be distracted um, So let's just get this encounter deck shuffled up good and proper. Get some good old mashing going on. I know my hero deck's already shuffled because I was playing with it yesterday. So there we have our encounter deck. We have our main scheme. Now that we've done the setup, we can flip it over. It's called the break-in. Rhino is trying to smash through the facility wall and steal a shipment of vibranium. You must stop him. If this stage is completed, the players lose the game. So this number here, seven, with a little character symbol, uh, is basically seven per player. So when there is seven threat built up on that scheme, Rhino wins. And each round, one threat per player will be added to the scheme. Rhino himself here. This is Rhino 1. He starts off at the bottom, as we can see, if I hold it a little closer. 
and hopefully not get the glare on it. He starts off with 14 hit points per player. When he moves on to his second phase, he has 15 hit points per player. So the first phase, we have a dial here for keeping track of his health, particularly for multiplayer games. These numbers can get ridiculously large. So there we are, 14 hit points on the Rhino, ready to go. As a hero, you have an alter ego. You always start in alter ego mode. So I am Jennifer Waters. My hit points are 15, so I set my tracker to 15 as well. I'll give these a shuffle anyway, but I know they are pretty randomized from yesterday. And as you can see from the backs, it's pretty clear which ones are the hero cards, the blue, and which ones are the villain cards, the orange. And if you're interested, the rhino cards have a nice, the, the, the actual villains themselves have a nice purple back, so you don't get them mixed up. Uh, I've got an array of tokens around the board. I'll explain those as and when we need to use them. We basically have some status effects, some damage and some threat, and then some multi-purpose tokens that can be used for different things. So each hero has a different hand size and your hand size can vary depending on whether you're in alter ego or hero form. As I'm in alter ego, my hand size is six. So as a start, I will do myself six cards. So as you look at these cards, the yellow ones are the justice, the gray ones are the, the standard basic cards, and the for, for She-Hulk, the purple and green, funnily enough, are her She-Hulk specific cards. So um, I've set up a little uh, phase tracker thing down here. Um, the game comes with a nice little card to keep track of where you are in the game and what's going on in each phase. But uh, when I'm doing these streams, I like to keep this on screen. Uh, it also helps me make sure I don't forget things. So we'll be cycling through this. So it's the player's phase. Player goes first. What can we do? Well. I can switch from being Jennifer Waters to being She-Hulk. Why would I want to do that? When I'm a superhero, superhero is awesome. Okay, so what this game introduces is that your alter ego has abilities as well as your superhero. Jennifer Walters is an attorney and she has a special ability of I object as an interrupt when threat would be placed on the scheme she can prevent one of that threat being added. She hooks ability do you even lift if you change as you change into she hook you automatically do two damage to an enemy so as you can see that's that's pretty powerful. Um, she has a thwart of one which means she can remove one th scheme one threat from the scheme. She has an attack of three, which is the highest in the game. So she can do physically attack of three to shoot to um, Rhino. And she has a defense of two, so she can defend against Rhino's attacks. So starting off on She-Hook's side, as you can see, we have a hand of cards and they all have a large number in the top left hand corner. That basically is how much it will cost to pay that card. But rather than earning tokens and earning resources like many other games to be able to afford to pay your cards, you simply pay for your cards by discarding cards. So if I wanted to pay the surveillance team, which costs two, I would have to discard cards from my hand with two of these pips in the corner. So all of these cards only have one each, so I would have to discard two cards to be able to afford to pay that one. So it's always a juggling act as to... Um, cards you want to be able to play and cards you want to get rid of to play other cards you want to play and there's always that vicious struggle of but I really want them all right so I am going to as a setup I'm going to pay one for interrogation room and I will discard great responsibility for that and people are probably shouting at me saying don't discard that responsibility. So there, now I have an interrogation room. That is a support, maximum one per player. When I defeat a minion, I can use this to remove a threat from a scheme. 
I will, I've got Gamma Slam here, which is brilliant when She-Hulk's health is really low, because basically you deal all of the damage she has taken as one single attack. Some of these cards as well have, for example, that Gamma Slam has hero action on it. That means I can only take that action, play that card when I'm in hero mode. So I think I'm just going to tool up, I think. I'm going to pay three, so I'm going to commit these three to play Heli Helicarrier, which basically lets me play cards cheaper later on. What I could do now, sorry my eyes are running, is I could flip to She-Hulk mode and do two damage to uh, Rhino, but I'm not going to. I'll stay as Jennifer Walters so you can see what happens. Okay, so that's the player, the main action phase over. We'll move on to upkeep. I can discard whatever any cards I choose not to keep, and then I draw back up to my hand size. And as I'm Jennifer Waters, my hand size is still six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's ground stomp. First Aid, Two Avengers Mansions, Legal Practice, and Superhuman Law Division. So, my go's over, I can't use these cards now, so that's there ready for my next turn. So now we move on to the Villain Phase. I have no cards that were exhausted, so uh, I don't need to ready in. Villain Phase, Step 1, Add Threat to the Main Scheme. So it says here, one threat per player is added. So now we're at 1 out of 7. Step two, the villain attacks or schemes. So depending on which form you're in, if you're in a superhero form, he will attack you. If you are in alter ego form, he has no idea who you are, so you will carry on with his scheme. So he will scheme now, and his scheme is one, but for every villain action, you draw one, these are sort of dual purpose, these encounter cards. So I draw one, and there will be a symbol on the bottom that tells me whether it gets boosted or not. So we are scheming for one plus, so you can probably make it out now, there's one little three star on that corner there, so that means it's an extra one. So he is scheming for two. So that's put the scheme up to three already, but Jennifer Waters objects. She can interrupt that and make sure only one is being put on rather than the two. So there we are, two out of seven on the scheme. There are no minions in play, so they're not going to attack. And then the next phase is we deal in counter cards. Each player, in turn, is dealt a card. Uh, there are certain things happening in the game that affect how many cards get dealt out. Uh, it is just one at the moment. And then once they've all been dealt out, the players resolve their cards in turn. So I have advance when revealed the villain scheme. So this could uh, get very nasty and we end up game over at the beginning of the game. So he is going to scheme again. So that's one plus another boost. This time we are boosting two. So that's three boosts being added to the scheme. So we are now already at five out of seven. Two more and it's the end of the game. This is a horrendous start. But I'm playing, it wouldn't go any differently. Right, back to the player phase. So, what am I going to do? So, I really need to get thwarting, don't I? So, I'm going to pay, I'm going to exhaust Helicarrier, because that reduces the cost of a card by one. So I'm now going to play Superhuman Human, Human Law Division for free. So it should have cost me one, had it, had it carry maybe it free. So as an action, alter ego action, so I'm going to do this when I am Jennifer. Exhaust Superhuman Law Division, spend a whatever that icon is resource, and remove two threat from a scheme. So I'm going to spend this first aid card, which has the appropriate symbol in the corner there, spending one resource to remove two threat from a scheme. So suddenly it's not looking quite so ominous. At 
what I didn't mention as well was each your hero has a basic action here. So for Jennifer, it's five recovery. So she can recover five health in one go, but she would have to be exhausted when she's carried that out. She-Hulk can do the thwart, attack and defense, which I did explain earlier. So I think just to buy myself some time here, I am going to pay legal, act, legal practice, which costs zero. So as a thwart action, I can choose and discard up to five cards from my hands to remove a threat from the scheme for each dealt this way. So I'm going to do all three cards from my hand and that legal practice to remove those three as well. So we are back to square one. And I've done nothing. Okay, draw up to hand size. I'm still at Jennifer Walters. So I think what I'm going to do now, because I've dealt with some threat, I'm going to flip, still... Um, I'm sorry, still in my action phase, I'm going to flip to She-Hulk, which automatically does two damage. One, two, to the Rhino. So he's down at 12 now out of 14. Wait. So now I've got no cards to discard. I draw up to hand size, but my hand size is now only four. So first aid. Strength, which is just a resource card. Split Personality, which is a free flip. And Haymaker, which is a punch. Right, ready cards? Sorry, this glare isn't great, is it? Not sure if there's anything I can do about it. I'll move them along slightly. A little better. Don't know if that's any better or not. Just one second. That's a bit better. A little bit in the dark now, but at least you can see the table. A little. Copy. Yeah, this isn't great, is it? But it'll do. Right, so I've readied my cards. We move on to the villain phase. We have threat to the scheme, one per player. Villain attacks or schemes. So now I am in hero mode, he attacks. So I can choose to defend. So I would have to exhaust She-Hulk to defend by two. His attack is two. I am not going to defend. So I boost. So now this ridiculous shadow is annoying me even more than the glare. I'm going to turn the light back on. Yeah. Right. in the middle, it might be a little bit more visible there then. Yeah, you said to, you've not got the glare on the cards to do in play. Right, so, villain attacks. As I've already said, I'm not going to defend. So we get a boost card. The boost is nothing. So it's a straightforward attack of two. So She-Hulk takes two damage. You have to choose to defend before you know what the boost is going to be. Otherwise, what's the point? Right, so now I'm She-Hulk, I can get punching. No, I can't. I'm getting ahead of myself. We have no minions in play, but now we need to deal the encounter card. So I get one. And it is Shocker. So we now have an enemy, a minion in play. He has three health. And now on each villain turn, he will be scheming as well as the Rhino, or he will be attacking as well as the Rhino. And when revealed, deal one damage to each hero. So I'm now down to 12 out of my 15.
Right, I am now going to pay two using this strength card which has two pips on it for Haymaker. Hero attack, deal three damage to an enemy. He's only got three health, so he's dead. Interrogation room, after you defeat a minion, I can exhaust that to remove a threat from a scheme. My second action, I'm saying second action, I'm used to playing Arkham Horror where you only have a limited number of actions. You've got as many, you can take as many actions as you can afford in this game. So I can't afford to play that 3-pip card. Um, actually, I could have exhausted Helicarry, so I only had to pay one resource for that. But it wouldn't have helped, because I still wouldn't have been able to afford this with one extra resource. I will pay... I don't know if I will pay use first aid or not. No, I'm not going to risk it yet. Gamma Slam might come around again. I will exhaust She-Hulk to do a 3 attack on Rhino. So that brings him down to 9. Then I'm going to flip back to Jennifer Walters, staying exhausted. But I don't have another. Have I played those cards in a different order? Maybe. Never mind. But well, there's no scheme threat to remove anyway. So I think that's my turn. Uh, because I'm back to Jennifer Waters, my hand size is now six again, so I can go draw four new cards. That's four Justice, Focused Rage. Jessica Jones and Daredevil. So in the same way that the villain has minions we can have allies as well but they will only stay around for a limited amount of time because they get injured for every action they take. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit more and then I think I'm going to call it a day. I just wanted to give you a feel for how the game plays. Um, so I'll have a couple more turns and then I think we'll call it a day. Mainly because my wife's about to head home and there will be all sorts of disruption on the stream and you don't want that. Okay, ready cards. Villain phase, add a threat. Villain will scheme because um, I'm in alter ego mode, so he will scheme for one with a boost of two. So that's another three scheme. So as you can see, it can it can actually swing back and forth quite quickly. Um, I dealt with the minion. We have no minions in play. Do an encounter. Hazard um, basically means there are uh, additional side schemes sometimes come into play and they can modify how the encounters and the, the scheming works. But, but. Right, gang up, treachery. When revealed on its alter ego side, this card gains surge, which means nothing happens but you draw another. Hard to keep down. When revealed, rhino heals for damage. If no damage was healed, it gains Surge, right. So he's almost back up to full health, which is not very nice. Okay, resolve my encounter card. Right, back to me. Just to give you a feel for how it works then, I'm going to bring side uh, an, um, an ally into play. So I'm going to pay one, no, not 
that one. I'm going to pay one, two, three, to bring Jessica Jones into play. Because I'm still Jennifer Waters, I'm going to exhaust Superhuman Law Division to spend this one, whatever that resource symbol is, to remove two threat from a scheme. I should have interrupted, shouldn't I, and removed one of those anyway, so one it would be one less. So my interrupt should have triggered. Okay, uh, so Jessica is going to thwart for what? But this little star symbol under her thwart and a star symbol under her attack means she takes a damage for taking those actions. So they're around for a short while, they'll do a few things and then they will go. That's basically how they work. Um, and then I may as well recover some health. Or shall I flip? I'm going to flip. I'm going to recover health up to 5, so I'm going to take myself back up to 15. I'm going to flip to She-Hulk, and then her automatic ability could deal 2 damage. I think that's me done. Right, now I'm in She-Hulk, my hand size is only 4, so I draw Superhuman Strength, Power of Justice, for Justice. Ready cards. Burn phase, add threat to the scheme. Now the villain will attack because I'm in hero form. That's an attack of two plus a boost of two. And I didn't even make the decision to de defend or not, did I? But never mind. That's four damage. What I could do is have Jessica Jones step in to take that damage for me to kill her off. But I'm not going to. I'm a big, strong girl. I'm going to take the four. No minions in play. Deal an encounter. Resolve it. Advance the villain schemes again. So that's one, a boost card for the scheme. That's another two. So that's three more scheme. So you can see there's a lot of back and forth as you're trying to get this. The, you're trying to take the pressure off by removing the threat from the scheme while in between trying to deal some damage to the villain to put an end to his plans full stop. So I think we'll just play one more round and then we'll finish. I think I've given you a flavour. That's all this video was intended to do. Okay, so play cards. I'm going to use the helicarrier to reduce the cost of this by one. So it's only costing me one to play that, so I will pay. Mm, let me think about this. I can't do that. I can't do what I wanted to do there. Well, let's do it anyway. Let's play that. I'm going to use. Let's use Power of Justice. I won't exhaust that because Power of Justice is the ability of... It, call, it generates double the resources when it's paying for a yellow card. So that's costing me two resources to do for Justice. Remove three threats from a scheme. Four instead if you paid for it using a thingy resource. I used a wild card so I don't think that counts. I have two cards left. I will exhaust Helicarrier, so it only costs me one to play Superhuman Strength. That is an upgrade for She-Hulk, so she now has plus two attack. Jessica Jones will do a two attack on 
Rhino. So she takes another hit. And She Hulk will do an attack. So it's an attack of three plus two from superhuman strength. So that's an attack of five. So we're getting down to four health. After She Hulk attacks, discard superhuman strength and stun the attacked enemy. So the Rhino is now stunned as well as down to four health. And stunned means next time he would attack, nothing happens and we remove the stun card. So it's a way of putting off an attack. Nothing to discard. I used all my cards. Draw up to hand size. I'm still She Hulk. One, two, three, four. Just one second, sorry. Everything ready. Apologies for the distractions. One threat to the scheme. That always happens anyway. I am in hero mode, so he would attack. Nothing happens, so he just removes the stun. So we've saved ourselves from a punching. Encounter cards with no minions in play. We dole out the encounter cards and we resolve those encounter cards. Stampede. When revealed, this card, I'm not alter ego. When revealed hero, Rhino attacks if the character. <laughs> so, so much for avoiding an attack. If the character is damaged by the attack, the character is stunned. So his attack is two. We always boost the villain's ability, it's a boost of zero. So, an attack of two, what I think I will do is let Jessica Jones take the attack. That kills her, the excess is wasted, but it means I'm not stunned for this round. Back to the player phase then. So, because I'm She-Hook, I still only have four cards. Legal practice is an alter ego action. One, two, punch lets me punch twice. So what I'm gonna do, just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to attack with She-Hulk, which is three damage. One, two, three. He's down to one health. I'm going to pay one for one, two punch after you've made a basic attack. Ready, She-Hulk. And then I'm just going to punch again. So that knocks him down to zero health. Which moves us on to Rhino stage 2. So the main change here is his attack is stronger and when revealed search the encounter deck and discard pile for the breaking and taking scheme. Breaking and taking. So now we have a second scheme in play to deal with. This icon here is a hazard icon, so that means from now on, when you're drawing an encounter card, you draw an extra one per whole group, not a one per player. This comes into play with two, um, two scheme. So two, what's it? Threat, two threats already on it. So, although we look like we're making progress, things have now got more difficult. Rhino is back up to 15 points of health. We now have two schemes to deal with. We are getting extra encounters every round, so things have escalated and Rhino is also tougher. So, I hope you enjoyed that brief demo. Um, I say brief, I've been online for half an hour. Um, hopefully it gives you a flavour for the game. The game comes with five heroes. She-Hulk, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain Marvel and Black Panther. 
There are four aspects, as I already mentioned. We have three villains to fight. We have Rhino, we have Claw, we have Ultron. Each of those have two different versions, Standard and Expert. There are multiple modular encounter sets you can add in. So there's a huge amount of variety. And I've been great fun with the game so far. Um, so yeah, it's yeah definitely recommended. Uh, also going forward, um, rather than committing you to buying loads and loads of expansions, even the expansions are all going to be modular. So the hero packs will simply be a new hero, their essential cards and some extra aspect cards that you can then use in your deck building. If you buy a villain pack, that will be that will give you a villain, some modular sets for that villain and that villain's encounter deck. So basically, you it, it's almost choose your own card game. If you like the look of a hero, buy it. Expand your card set. You don't have to. Uh, if you if you fancy some new challenges, but you're not bothered about the villain, the, the um, getting new heroes, just buy another villain set. Uh, already announced are Captain America, Miss Marvel, uh, Green Goblin, and the Wrecking Crew. So that's two hero sets, two villain sets. I believe they're all coming out uh, sort of January, February, March, and April, respectively. Uh, there's already been talk that Thor is on his way as well. So it's basically going to be a monthly expansion for this game from January onwards. Um, so it could prove expensive, depending on how much you want to commit. But there is plenty of game here in this single core box. So thoroughly recommended from me. Um, and so that's it. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you soon.